Turns out that whole speech and teaser I gave at the end of the series quickly became irrelevant when I realized I didn't feel like doing this format anymore and I soundly put the whole idea to bed. But sometimes, you really can't let sleeping dogs lie. Sometimes you just gotta pick yourself up, pull it together, and get this the hell over with. Because if I gotta deal with another this age poorly on the Destiny Hero video, I am never going to sleep again at night. So yeah, we're gonna be covering everything that I didn't cover before for one reason or another. So, with that, let's just shotgun through the relevant irrelevance real quick, including the stuff that I've already covered that has since had a major status change. And with that in mind, Rampart Blaster received yet another errata, which put her anime effect back! Uh... Woo. Hooray. Good for... Speed Duel, I guess? Hero Kid exists, I mentioned it briefly in the original video of the series, but again, it's not technically a real hero monster even if it has close ties. It's honestly prime for a retrain if you ask me. Miracle Kids is crappy support for him, so it doesn't matter. A hero emerges, Hero Ring, and Hero Spirit all say hero in their title, but they're not capitalized, so they also don't count, even if Flame Wingman is staring into your soul, begging you to think so. A skill of hero and hero of the east are just here, I guess. And Dinah, hero for hire, is... a mistake. Also, yes, I know, Dark Angel became relevant like a month later. This is the curse of YouTube. Okay, I'm pretty sure that covers all of the bases. Unless you guys want me to cover the entire heroic archetype, which, uh... uh um... Hmm. No, 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 no. Stay on track. Anyway, now that that's all done, on to the actual stuff you came here for. And the first card we have to look out that came out after a start to finish episode was already uh, finished is Destiny Hero Denier. He's a level 3 Dark Warrior with 1100 attack and 600 defense, and his effect is, if this card is normal or special summoned, you can take one of your Destiny Hero monsters from your deck, graveyard, or is banished, and place it on top of your deck. You can only use this effect of Destiny Hero Denier once per turn. If you have a Destiny Hero monster in your field or graveyard, other than Destiny Hero Denier, you can special summon this card from your graveyard. You can only use this effect of Denier once per duel. Acting as a third malicious in a world where it seemed third maliciouses were a thing of fantasy, now he's extra useful. And useless. This card is a pretty relevant combo extender, even with that recent Mally to 3 again situation. Anyone want to take bets on how long that's going to last for this time? At this point, the hybrid builds are so desperately clinging to Aster's deck for relevance, I doubt a third malicious would even change anything. What are we even going to use a third malicious for? Another DPE that can't do anything against Insert current meta here. Anyways, Denier is a good extender, and well, that's about it. It's not that interesting in effect, even if it is good. His art is pretty cool though, definitely feels like a GX era D hero. He's even got D-Chain as a little weapon, that's neat. Destiny Hero Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer is a level 8 dark traitor with 2500 I'm too good to stay an E-Hero attack and 2100 I'm gonna ruin the competitive scene for a year defense. He requires a level 6 or higher hero monster and one destiny hero, and his effect reads, Monsters your opponent controls lose 200 attack for each hero card in your graveyard. You can only use each of the following effects of Destroy Phoenix Enforcer once per turn. Quick effect, you can destroy both one card you control and one other card on the field. If this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can activate this effect. Special summon one destiny hero monster from your graveyard during the next standby phase of the next turn. Ugh, <sighs> this guy. My opinion on this card is so goddamn complicated that if you could look into my brain when I start to think about it, I'd make Reed Richards look like a moron by comparison. Yeah, it's a good card. I know that. You know that. The card was literally the most played card of a format or two. You've heard of it. 
That being said, I like the idea of taking Aster's signature and singular contribution to the e-hero pool and making a version that actually fits with his preferred deck. It is named after him and all. On top of that, making it a visual fusion with Plasma is a great bit of thematic legwork, especially when Jaden ended up getting his equivalent of a similar idea later. This card is so good that it's basically the single thing all modern hero deck building communities focus around. For better or for worse, D-Force is a continuous spell, and its effect reads, When this card is activated, you can add one Destiny Hero Plasma from your deck or graveyard to your hand. While you control a Destiny Hero Plasma, apply the following effects. 1. You cannot draw during the draw phase. 2. Your opponent cannot target cards you control with card effects. And 3. Each Plasma you control gains 100 attack for each monster in the graveyards, cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects, and can make a second attack during each battle phase. Despite what another video of mine may have implied, I actually really liked this card and was super glad to see it finally get adapted, and in a way that made it arguably better than the anime version, which was already kind of broken. Sure, on paper it may seem like a bit of a downgrade, it doesn't give him god card immunity, but it does work way better with modern sensibilities. It does what it says on the can, makes Plasma harder to out and a much more dangerous threat, just like it should. Dr. D is a normal spell, and it reads, Banish one Destiny Hero monster from your graveyard. Add to your hand or special summon one Destiny Hero monster from your graveyard. You can banish this card from your graveyard, then target two Destiny Hero monsters you control, choose one of those monsters, and its attack becomes the other monster's attack. Graveyard, 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 graveyard. A card that's definitely more pure D-Hero, so of course nobody wants to touch it with a 50-foot paw because it doesn't contribute to the broth of the consistency soup that is modern hero building. But I think it's actually really great in its original context. Destiny heroes have a lot of really cool and unique combo pieces and boss monsters that can be recycled off this. It even has a bonus OTK boosting effect because it's a hero card and of course it does. Break the Destiny is a normal trap and it reads, Target one level 8 or higher Destiny hero monster or one Destiny and Dragoon you control. Destroy it, and if you do, your opponent skips their next main phase one. You can banish this card from your graveyard, add one spell or trap from your deck to your hand that specifically lists a Destiny Hero Monster's card name, or Destiny and Dragoon, in its text, except for Break the Destiny. You can only use one Break the Destiny effect per turn, and only once that turn. A card that I think is actually really good despite little relevance. Though I kind of get why, it is a little situational, and it feels like we're getting farther away from skipping phases being a relevant detriment to anything anyway. I think there's definitely some neat nonsense you could do with this if you cared enough, but eh, that's up to you. Wake Up Your Elemental Hero is probably a very confusing card to people who have never watched the sub or skip ending themes. Anyway, he's a level 10 light warrior fusion monster with 2500 attack and 2100 defense. He requires one element to hero fusion monster and any number of warrior monsters. It must be fusion summoned and gains 300 attack for each material used for its summon. This card can make a number of attacks on monsters each battle phase up to the number of fusion materials used. After damage calculation, if this card battles an opponent's monster, destroy that monster and if you do, inflict damage equal to that monster's attack. If this fusion summon card is destroyed, special summon a warrior monster from your hand or deck. A really awesome throwback and a very unique piece of support that combines effects of a bunch of classic heroes into one card, acting as a really powerful late game push. Which is what I would say until some fucking idiots from Konami apparently decided that even though the wording isn't contradictory, the best card you can use to summon this thing apparently makes it so its materials just don't count as materials, even though they do. So that means he doesn't get the attack boost or the multi-attack. Brilliant. I hate this stupid game. Anyways, aside from that, cool card, I guess. I hope they make more wacky stuff like this in the future, though. It's pretty neat. It's a good super poly target for the mirror match, too. Wing Karibo level 6 is a level 6, light fairy monster with 300 attack and 200 defense. It's got archetype tags for elemental hero and favorite, and it cannot be normal summoned or set. Must be special summoned from hand or graveyard by banishing one elemental hero fusion monster or a wing karibo from your hand, face up monster zone, or graveyard. You can only special summon one wing karibo level 6 once per turn this way. When an opponent's monster declares an attack, or when your opponent activates an effect on the field, quick effect. You can tribute this card, destroy that monster, and if you do, inflict damage to your opponent equal to its original 
original attack. Ah, uh, finally, our precious little guy gets a hero retrain at long last. It's been a wish of mine for literal years for there to be a new Wing Karibo monster that helps the E-Heroes. And while this isn't exactly what I pictured, I'm not complaining. It's actually not too dissimilar to some of my own concepts for a hero winged Karibo. I recently held down a duel for like three turns at locals because my opponent was unable to summon anything against me because of the Wing Karibo sitting there with a gun called burn damage pressed up against the skull with only 700 points left. It's a beautiful thing. The bare minimum this card had to do was just to be a generic monster that doesn't mess with the basic combos. And he manages to do that and more by actually working his great searchable discard fodder with two relevant and useful archetype tags. His disruption isn't the most amazing thing ever, but you're getting to play winged Karibo in your elemental hero deck. Are you really gonna complain about that? He's overall just extremely combo friendly and reusable. <laughs> what a guy. Finally home after all these years. Happy to have you, little buddy. And the final new card today is the man himself. Elemental hero, Flame Wing Man, Infernal Rage. A level 8 Wind Warrior Fusion Monster with 2100 attack and 1200 defense. He requires two elemental hero monsters with different attributes. He must be fusion summoned, and if this card is special summoned, you can add one card with favorite in its name from your deck or graveyard to your hand. You can tribute this card that was fusion summoned using a normal monster as fusion material. Special summon one level 7 or lower elemental hero monster from your deck or extra deck that cannot be normal summoned or set, ignoring summoning conditions. You can only use each effect of Flame Wingman Infernal Rage once per turn. He really should have been called Skydive Scorcher, considering the artwork and all, but whatever, I guess. I gotta admit, I never thought we'd ever get E-Hero retrains. Uh, sure, you can make an argument for Destroy Phoenix Enforcer, but that card could also very much pass as just a sort of branch evolution that takes a different route than Shining Phoenix Enforcer. This guy is genuinely the first straight-up retrain, and he's... not very Flame Wing man -y. But that's the depressingly dull reality of modern card design for you. Combo piece or get the hell out, I guess. It helps that he's good, though, and supports using a more pure build of the deck to bring out his full potential. He combos extremely well with the new Wing Karibo, and that tag out effect opens up a lot of possibilities to dip into the vast pool of level 7 or lower fusion monsters for heroes. I also think we're finally past the days where it feels like almost every new e-hero fusion can be played using the bare minimum amount of e-heroes, which, thank god. However, there is one particular thing that especially makes Flamewing Man relevant today, and let's talk about him next time on Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. In fact, why don't I show you by busting out a new hero that no one's ever seen before?